Hi, this is Casey McCoy at Rochester High School, and I just wanted to take a few minutes and show you around my online portfolio. So this is my online portfolio. Um, it's somewhat dorky. I can't help that. Um, basically, how this started was that I was looking for a way to find to make a portfolio that was easier than my behemoth of a binder, but was also more flexible as I wanted to change it instead of shuffling papers around and was really visible, visibly connecting the documentation with the standards themselves. A lot of my classwork is already digital, um, not so much on the student's end of it, but I have daily recaps, which I do um, all the time, every single day. So a lot of my stuff is already online, so this kind of evolved from that. Let me walk you through the kind of possibilities of an online portfolio. Um, this is only an idea. There is a template for this one in the Rochester 3A domain, but, you know, you, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want, really, as long as it's clear and um, shows what you want to show. And this is kind of my personality, so don't feel blocked in by that. Basically, this introductory page just gives my basic teaching information. Um, I have my syllabus, classroom management plan for each class, and then I also included my online presence. Basically, this I could never do really effectively with my old paper binder because I do a lot of stuff online, like a Twitter that always links research. I set up a Learnist account. I mean, there's tons more at this point, but this is from last year. So I went ahead and linked that so administrators can see what I'm actually doing there. I also put at the bottom of this page, let me scroll down, supporting documentation. Basically, anything that wasn't currently online, freaks me out that was changed nine hours ago, anything that wasn't currently online that I didn't already have here, I just made this file cabinet page and dumped it right here. That way there's not a ton of extra conversions, and I know it looks like a lot, but last year I wasn't so Google friendly. Like I didn't have Google Drive, so this I would expect to change quite a bit. Um, so that's on the introduction page, that's the only place, but that allows me to link super easily uh, electronic versions of my evidence without a ton of extra work. The second page I have here is my teaching reflection and philosophy. And this last year, I just went ahead and typed it all in, like copy pasted it. But this year I know that I'm gonna be switching to the Google Doc format. So I went ahead and did that here. This is not my new reflection, obviously, but I have a reflection and I linked an old reflection because I think that that's important to, to kind of show my progression. That's obviously optional. And then also my philosophy of teaching. I like that these are Google Docs because I can make them different every single day and it will change my page every day with really no extra effort. So that's positive that I can kind of modify things on the fly to reflect what I'm doing and how I feel at any given day. Uh, the next page that I have here is my goals and accomplishments page. This, same deal, I made it Google Doc friendly this year. And for this one, I have my goals and accomplishments for the year that I was turning in, right? But then I also included the previous year and how I felt about, you know, what my progress really was towards those goals. Um, Reflection is a big part of the evaluation document, so I wanted to make sure that my administrators knew that I was taking the time to reflect um, on what I've done. Each of the domains that I have here, they're set up the same exact way, and that's again, I tweaked for this year, but I haven't really changed my portfolio. Um, every domain has subdomains, and so I went ahead and put in, here's your domain name, domain one is planning and preparation. Subdomain knowledge of discipline. I made little Google drawing pictures, essentially, of each one of the um, possible ratings that you could get and what it says about that rating. And if you download the template that I have, if you click on these, they get bigger. So I know that's tiny writing, but I mean, you can look at it the other way. Uh, and then under each subsection, I have evidence going down one column, and then I have a reflection going down the other. And don't freak out, because this first page, this first subsection here is big, but I couldn't figure out any way to address each one of those things in one paragraph. 
So I just made a paragraph for each of them. But all those things are included in domain 1A, essentially. Um, so that's why it looks like that. Everything else, I just have links and a reflection. It is like this on every single domain. So I'm going to scroll up. Try not to make you nauseous. Sorry, that's going fast. Um, same thing with domain two, three, four, and I think it's in four. You can be really creative. Like, take a look. What what evidence meets this? How can I show that in a cool, unique way? Um, that was domain three. But check that out. I really had to plan all of my evidence before I started or else this would have exploded into a bigger explosion than it already is. But I was thinking, you know, like, for example, this one, how can I show that I communicate better than I have previously? So I just went ahead and put my Google website traffic. And this year, I mean, I've already doubled all of these. So that's kind of cool to track. And it's a unique way to show things that your administrators are interested in and want to know, but probably wouldn't find on their, on their own. Um, this reflection piece, while the evaluation document doesn't necessarily say that you have to have it, I think it's great because the document actually makes you reflect. That's one of the things. Can you reflect? Do you? But also, I think administrators really appreciate it when you connect the pieces for them. So instead of them giving them a handful of material and saying, oh, here, I've met these standards, you can actually kind of guide them to see it how you see it. And I think that's really positive, at least for myself. Um, <clears throat> the last two things I have here are dorkier, and you can take them or leave them. I made a little credentials page to show my teaching experience, go northern, you know, etc. But I think next year I'm going to put professional development here, uh, and that might be a great way to use this page and keep it, you know, really simply up to date. And then I also made an about me section, which is less professional, it's just about me, uh, included a couple pictures. Dorky, I get that, but I do share this portfolio sometimes with parents, um, other colleagues, people in other districts. So I think it's kind of cool to give an overview of who I am and really connect that. Um, as I said, this template is in the Rochester 3A domain of templates. Hopefully I've inspired you to create a portfolio and thanks for taking a few minutes to check out this portfolio.